Welcome to the HIT Podcast, HIT, Human Resources, Insurance, and Technology. I'm your host, Toby Kennedy. As always, my goal is to go through all the things, move it around in the space, curate it into a bite-sized, digestible weekly follow for you, dropping every Tuesday. With that said, your weekly hit this week is brought to you by Montage Insurance Solutions. And let's jump right into your weekly hit. Guys, for this week's weekly hit, we are having a serious conversation about pet insurance. It comes up. I have clients asking me about it. If you would have told me 10 or 15 years ago, I was going to be having conversations about puppy and kitty cat insurance. Uh, I probably would have thought that things have gone sideways, but it's worked its way in the fur babies, man. It is an important benefit and only about 10 to 15% of employers are offering pet insurance. And it's kind of a nice way to differentiate yourself. It's almost always done on a voluntary basis, right? Voluntary meaning just that Mr. And Mrs. Employee, if you want it, Take it. Great. If you don't, no problemo either. But it's a nice way to kind of add an extra benefit to the benefits portfolio. Typically, the pet insurance world, so let's just dive into how it works, right? So you can, we can all coach ourselves up on pet insurance. It's normally done on a reimbursement basis. Some will pay the vet directly, but oftentimes your members are going to get reimbursed, right? So that's one distinguishing characteristic between the various pet insurers out there if you are looking to um, procure a quote. There's also often a deductible of some nature, a couple hundred dollars, maybe 500, something like that, to where the pet insurance will kick in after the point that your employees have spent up to that certain threshold, right? And even after they've satisfied the deductible, there's almost always some version of a co-insurance, where the plan will pay 70 or 80 or 90%, sometimes 100%, but not often, of the vet's bills. So when we're looking to distinguish pet insurers, number one, are they paying the vet directly, which maybe does keep some of my members' costs down, or are they reimbursing my members? Number two, let's look at deductible levels. So when is the insurance going to perform, like at what financial threshold? And then also, hey, let's look at the co-insurance amount, right? So is this plan going to perform where they pay 70% of the bill and this one maybe pays 90% of the bill, 80, 100? Those sorts of moving pieces are all inside of the various pet insurers. Now, some of them will do this on a payroll deduction for you. Some of them will only do it via a payroll deduction. And that might not be something you want. Maybe you just want to say, hey, look, guys, here's the 1-800 number or here's the URL you, you go to the pet insurer and you sign up if you want, and they'll go on a direct bill basis where they send you, you know, a, a sign up of some nature and you pay them directly. Other organizations like when it's done via payroll deduction, right? But it's important for you to know as you're kind of shopping and uh, maybe choosing between one pet insurer or the other, do, do you have a preference on whether or not it's payroll deducted and can this vendor support one or the other? The next thing you want to look at is what's generally covered under the plan. Typically, pet insurance will come in one of three flavors, uh, accident and illness, accident only, and then a wellness sort of a plan where they'll take care of vaccinations, routine visits, those sorts of a thing. Accident only, maybe that covers just like a broken bone or something that might befall your pet, whereas accident and illness maybe covers a little bit more, it's a little more robust, and your employees have more uh, instances that are covered by the pet insurance where they can get some help with their veterinary bills. Equally as important with what they do cover, a lot of times we need to look at what they don't cover. What are things that are excluded? First and foremost, the plans might have some version of mandatory routine care where you have to see the vet or get your heartworm treatment or something like that for the plan to perform. That's typically not covered. Your member may have to pay that service along the way just to keep the plan active. But some other exclusions might be like a pre-existing condition or a certain age of the pet. Maybe that has either a waiting period or a complete exclusion associated with it where they look back and if it hasn't been an issue for X amount of months, then it's no longer going to be a problem. Or they just say, look, if it's ever been an issue, this specific thing, if it rears up in the pet again, that, that just won't be covered. Some other things like boarding, kennels, um, uh, exams along the way, maybe those are, are parts of typical exclusions um, that your insurer just won't cover with the pet. So we, we, we want to wrap our arms around some of those exclusions as well when we're choosing between which pet insurance vendor we're going to roll out to our employees. 
So we've talked about some of the inclusions. We've talked about some of the exclusions. The next piece of this puzzle is talking about the network. Most of the time, the pet insurers do not have a network and they'll allow your members to see any licensed vet. But you do want to look into that again as we're, we're trying to wade into this world of which pet insurance company do I think is right for my employees. A next piece to look at that would be the network and to know typically they're supposed to cover really any licensed vet. And finally, what you'll typically find baked into the policy are maximum coverage amounts. So your insurer might have some flexibility on the deductible, might have some flexibility on whether or not they payroll deduct, some flexibility on the co-insurance amount. And then the last piece is the annual maximums. Some companies go as low as like two to 3,000. Some companies like Spot does a really great job of being super flexible. They'll go all the way up to unlimited maximums. But a lot of them will have 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, that type of a range of the annual maximum. So, hey, we're going to pay for 80% of the vet bills at any licensed vet to an annual maximum of $10,000, for example. And then from a premium standpoint, the average cost for a puppy to get their insurance is about $300 per year for a five dollars to $7,000 annual maximum plan. So we're spending about $300 uh, or about maybe $400 to $500 for an unlimited plan. So in that kind of range of three-ish hundred for five to seven thousand dollars or maybe all the way up to four four fifty for an unlimited plan that's about what we should be expecting our members to pay from a premium standpoint to have these plans and of course there's always coverage for much more than just dogs right it's dogs cats birds exotic pets and again from an employer standpoint a lot of times covering your employees' animals or allowing your employees to cover their animals rather fits in and aligns with our, our general ethos and the conversation that we're trying to have with employees, but only about 10 to 15% of employers on average have this benefit. So when we're talking about benefits portfolios and unique ways to differentiate ourselves, I just wanted to have this brief conversation with you about pet insurance as an option. That's all the time we have for this week. Join us every week here on the HIP Podcast. We drop on Tuesdays, and thank you guys so much for the support along the way. Until next week, make this the best week yet. Yeah.